Cape Breton, a sparsely populated island in Canada, boasts some of the most breathtaking scenery on the planet. The stunning shoreline offers a front row view of the majestic Atlantic Ocean. At the same time, the inlet is dominated by towering pine, fir, and deciduous trees, interspersed with extensive low-lying bushes and flowers. The island's diverse flora is home to various animals, from small creatures like foxes, lynxes, and hares, to larger ones like black bears and moose. However, amidst the allure of Nova Scotia's wilderness, tragedy struck. Welcome to Amazing Animal Stories. On October 27, 2009, 19-year-old folk singer Taylor Mitchell was ripped into pieces by a pack of coyotes. It's a heart-wrenching case. And in this episode, we delve deeper into the unfortunate circumstances surrounding Taylor's death. So join in as we uncover the details of this tragic event and brace yourself. The Eastern Coyotes in Cape Breton Highlands National Park are larger than their ancestors. And this is due to interbreeding with wolves in Ontario and Quebec when they migrated from the southwestern United States to Nova Scotia in the early 20th century. The result is a more robust creature that resembles a medium-sized German Shepherd. While coyotes are optimistic creatures, they're also skilled hunters who can take down even the most formidable prey, such as a moose, thanks to their intelligence and well-formed packs. Coyotes are also highly adaptable and curious creatures, which allows them to thrive near human settlements and scavenge for food. Despite this, they typically fear humans and will avoid them whenever possible. So, how do we explain the attack on Taylor Mitchell? While coyote attacks are incredibly rare, they do happen. In many cases, encounters occur because people have fed the coyotes or attempted to rescue their pets from an attack. Additionally, the presence of coyote pups in the area can lead to increased aggression from these creatures. That being said, there are some rare cases where coyotes will stalk and hunt humans, as was, unfortunately, the case with Taylor. While tragic, it's important to understand that this behavior is not typical of coyotes and should not be seen as a reason to fear them. Taylor Mitchell was a talented and up-and-coming folk musician based in Toronto, Ontario. Despite being just 19 years old and fresh out of high school, she had already made a name for herself in the considerable Canadian music scene. She poured her heart and soul into her songwriting and regularly performed her music in various venues all across the country. Her hard work paid off when she signed a record deal with Back Road Tavern Productions in 2009, and she released her debut album for your consideration, which was met with critical acclaim. Excited about her burgeoning success, Taylor embarked on a solo tour of Eastern Canada to promote her album, and she was scheduled to play her show in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia on October 28th. However, Taylor arrived a couple of days early and with some extra time in her hands, she decided to explore the local breathtaking Highlands National Park, one of the most stunning spots on the island. On a sunny afternoon in the park, Taylor was thrilled to be surrounded by nature. As an environmentalist, she had always enjoyed nature walks. In this area's stunning beauty was a welcome distraction from her busy schedule. The vast expanse of the park, with its 93,000 hectares of land and dozens of hiking areas, was incredibly inviting. Taylor decided to explore the Skyline Trail, one of the most popular hiking trails on the island. With its gentle slope and breathtaking views of the Gulf of St. Lawrence, it seemed like the perfect choice for Taylor. Many visitors come to the trail to enjoy the fresh air and take in the scenery, but others come to catch a glimpse of the wild animals that call the park home. Taylor was excited at the prospect of seeing the beautiful wildlife while also taking a much-needed break from her busy touring schedule. Around 2.30 p.m., Taylor parked her car in the parking lot and headed up an access road towards the Skyline Trail. After about 15 minutes of walking, she passed by a couple heading in the opposite direction. Unfortunately, this was the last time she was left unharmed. The couple continued down the access road and noticed two large coyotes heading in the opposite direction. They even snapped a photo of the animals. 
Shortly after, they heard loud cries in the distance, but couldn't determine if it was coming from a human or an animal. Coyote owls themselves can sound eerily similar to human cries, so it wasn't easy to tell. The couple was disturbed by the sounds and rushed to call 911 from an emergency phone in the parking lot. Around 3.15 p.m., the Royal Canadian Mounted Police received an alert and an ambulance was dispatched to the scene. Unfortunately, by this time, the coyotes had already caught up with Taylor on the access road. The predators growled fiercely and charged at her, trying to scare her into running. This was a typical hunting tactic as it allowed them to bite at the legs and the rear of their prey. To the coyotes, Taylor was not a human being, but rather a prey animal. It's heartbreaking to imagine what Taylor must have gone through in those moments. She did everything she could to defend herself, even using a small pocket knife, but the coyotes were relentless. Clearly, they were in full predator mode and saw Taylor as their prey. It's hard to even fathom the fear and panic she must have experienced as she was attacked and bitten by the wild animals. The situation quickly escalated, with Taylor being pushed back into the trail and ultimately falling onto a hill where the coyotes attacked her even more viciously. It's a tragic and devastating outcome that nobody could have predicted or prevented. As Taylor lay injured on the ground, she tried to escape the relentless attacks of the coyotes by running towards the bathroom. Her blood trailed behind her as she desperately tried to open the door, but her efforts were in vain. In a panic, she made her way toward the trees, where she finally collapsed from her injuries and blood loss. With no one around her to help, Taylor was vulnerable to the continued attacks of the predators. Meanwhile, a group of hikers who came across Taylor's belongings on the access road became concerned when they realized something was amiss. They followed the trail, discovered her camera, and started calling out for her. When they arrived at the end of the clearing, they found blood and extra clothing. Approaching the bathroom, they saw that the door was covered in blood. As they turned the corner, they were confronted with the sight of Taylor and a lone coyote. The hikers tried to charge at the coyote to protect Taylor, but the animal was fearless and even aggressive toward them. After several attempts, the coyote eventually ran away, but not before standing a few meters away and growling menacingly at the hikers. Despite the hikers' best efforts to save her, Taylor was in critical condition, with multiple bites on her head and legs, and her flesh torn and bleeding. She was conscious and spoke to her rescuers, but her injuries were severe. An officer from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police arrived and fired a shotgun at the animal, forcing it to retreat. However, the officer didn't kill the coyote, as he initially thought a bear had attacked Taylor. Taylor was quickly rushed to the hospital, but unfortunately, her injuries were too severe, and she succumbed to blood loss and died shortly after. After Taylor's tragic death, people tried to understand what had happened. Some speculate that Taylor may have unknowingly stumbled upon a coyote den, triggering the attack. Others thought that Taylor might have been feeding the coyotes, causing them to become aggressive. Unfortunately, none of these theories were substantiated, leaving officials to reevaluate the potential risk coyotes possessed to visitors in the park. As a result, the authorities had to locate and eliminate the rogue coyote responsible for the attack, and the park wardens began their search for the animal. Despite the tragic incident, Taylor's mother advocated for preserving the coyotes, citing her daughter's passion for environmentalism. She emphasized that nature is wildlife's domain and humans must be aware of the risk involved in venturing into it. However, park officials had to take action to ensure the safety of park visitors. After the attack, an aggressive female coyote was put down, followed by three more, including a large male coyote near the Skyline Trail. An investigation revealed that three of the coyotes had been involved in the attack with Taylor's blood found in their fur. The male, large coyote, was also identified as the alpha photographed earlier in the access road and was present when Taylor was found, with shotgun pelts on his coat as evidence. It seemed that the aggressive female and large male coyote may have been a couple, and the other coyotes were their packmates. However, the coyote's aggressive behavior wasn't limited to this incident. 
Almost a year later, in November 2009, a coyote approached the couple close enough that the man was able to hit it with a stick on the head. Then, 10 months after Taylor's attack, a 16-year-old girl was bitten on the head during a camping trip with her parents. Coyotes were usually known to be afraid of humans, so this behavior is unusual. Wildlife experts suggest culling the coyote population, but others oppose the idea, as it wouldn't have lasting effects, given that coyotes breed rapidly. One female coyote can give birth to seven or more pups. In response, Nova Scotia declared a $20 bounty on coyotes, but it didn't apply to the park. Taylor's mother didn't want the coyotes to be killed and instead established the Taylor Mitchell Legacy Trust. This organization supports community outreach for music and other art forms and educates people on habitat preservation. Taylor strongly loved music and the environment, and her untimely death was a tragic loss. However, her mother's response to the incident showed how much they respected the natural world, even though Taylor is no longer with us. Her music lives on as a tribute to her life and legacy.